So this is pop quiz seven, which was related to moles and bonding. Sodium and flu fluorine react to form a compound. State the structure and the bonding of sodium fluorides. So first we have to state the structure uh, and what type of bonding it will have ionic bonding and ionic compounds. What is a structure? They will have ionic lattice. Giant lattice means like regular arrangement will be there. So giant ionic lattice. And what kind of bonding it is there? It will have an ionic bonding. Because it's between the metal and a non-metal, so metal and non-metal, they will have ionic bonding. Explain how the electrical conductivity of sodium fluoride provide an ev evidence for the existence of ions. So how we can say that the electrical conductivity of sodium fluoride can give an evidence that it, it has ions. So first, what will happen in solid states? Sodium fluoride, because it's an ionic compound, does not conduct electricity. And why it does not conduct electricity? Because ions are not free to move. But what happened in molten or aqueous? The ions are free to move. So it conduct electricity. How this given evidence about, because that's how we explain the structure of ionic compound. We say ionic compounds, the ions are not free to move in a solid state. So that's why it is not conductor. If it if ions were free to move in a solid state, then it should conduct. So how the marks are distributed, one mark you will store when you mention sodium fluoride does not conduct electricity in solid state. And the second mark, because the ions are not free to move. Then in molten or aqueous, it can conduct electricity electricity because ions are free to move. Explain why fluoride ion is difficult to polarize. What is the meaning of polarization? The term polarization or distortion is the same thing like, say if we have So if we have sodium ion is there and a fluorine, fluoride ion. So distortion or polarization means like these electrons shifted towards the positive ion or attracted towards the positive ion, we call that as a distortion or polarization. The question is why it is difficult to polarize fluoride ion. Even if they say why it is difficult to polarize fluoride ion compared to chloride ion, your answer remains the same. Because when polarization depends on what factors polarization depends on or the distortion depends on number one, the size of the positive ion. The size of the positive ion should be small as possible. Number two, the charge on the positive ion. The charge on the positive ion should be large as possible. Number three, the size of the negative ion. The size for a greater distortion, like size of a positive ion should be small, charge on the positive ion should be large, and size of the negative ion should also be large to cause a greater distortion. So when you check fluorine, fluorine is smaller in size. Like first shell, it has two electron, and the second shell, it has seven electron, fluorine atom. But fluoride ion, it will have eight electrons. So why it is difficult to polarize a fluoride ion, even if they ask compared to chloride ion or bromide ion. So what you will mention, you will mention one thing, because for a larger distortion, the size of ion should be large. But for a fluoride ion, fluoride ion is small in size. That is one thing. So when the ions are small, like the size is 
fluoride is small in size. So as a result, what will happen? There will be greater attraction between the nucleus and the valence shell electron, the last shell electron. As a result, what will happen? It will be difficult to cause distortion. So fluoride is smaller in size, one thing, and it also have a smaller charge. And as a result, what will happen? There will be uh, like greater attraction between the nucleus and the valence shell or the last shell electron. As a result, it will be difficult to pull this electron out from the fluoride ion. Is it uh, clear, this one? Why fluoride ion is difficult to polarize? These are the factors which affect the polarization. So for in case of a fluoride, instead of large size, it is smaller in size. Aluminum trichloride also react with sodium hydroxide. Calculate the maximum mass of aluminum hydroxide precipitate when excess of aluminum trichloride react with 150 cm cube or 1.5 mole per dm cube sodium hydroxide. So how to solve this question? First, we'll work out the moles of sodium hydroxide. Then from moles of sodium hydroxide, we'll take a ratio to get the moles of aluminum hydroxide. And then we multiply by the molar mass to get the mass of aluminum hydroxide. So moles equal concentration into volume. The concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution is given 0.15. The concentration is 1.5. And the volume is 150 cm cube. So we have to convert into dm cube. So we divide by 1000. This will be 0.15. When we multiply, we got the moles, that is 0 0.225 mole. After getting the moles, this is these are the moles of sodium hydroxide. After getting the moles of sodium hydroxide, we'll take a ratio between sodium hydroxide and aluminum hydroxide. According to the equation, the ratio is 3 to 1. If 3 moles of sodium hydroxide, 1 mole of aluminum hydroxide. If we have 0 0.225 moles of sodium hydroxide, it will be X moles of aluminum hydroxide. We just cross multiply. So when we cross multiply, this will give us a value for moles of aluminum hydroxide. So 3X is equals to 0.225. So this will be divided. This will give us 0 0.075 moles of aluminum hydroxide. After getting the moles of aluminum hydroxide, we need the mass in gram. So we have the formula mass in gram is equals to moles multiplied by molar mass. So moles are 0 0.075 for aluminum hydroxide. And the molar mass, you have to use a periodic table for that. Aluminum is um, 27. So we write plus oxygen is 16. Multiplied by 3 plus hydrogen is 1 multiplied by 3. Because so 3 three are oxygen, 3 hydrogen, and 1 aluminium. When we multiply all of them, we get 5.85 and the unit will be gram. Because this always gives us mass in gram. Is it uh, clear? So this was the pop quiz seven, which was related to molds and bonding.